Hi, hello, and welcome back to the channel again for another unboxing video. This time it's been a week or so, maybe a couple of weeks now. But yeah, let's get straight into it. So um, as I go to grab the box, as always, fit pick here. So today um, went with the Obsidian um, MX1s from 2017, eggshell Thuragod shorts, um, just a blue cotton on under t-shirt, um, and then the, you've seen them on the channel, the L.L. Bean um, flannel in the indigo tartan. So let's get in the box. Actually waited for these for over a week now um, to come through. So one of the reasons why this video is coming out so late versus some of the other videos on this pair that you may have seen. So this is, to read out the box, MX1 85OG. This is straight from sneakers. Put an image up at the top, got them. Um, so yeah, I actually, I thought these were gonna be easy. I entered every single raffle that I saw and I wondered, am I gonna end up with three pairs? Um, and then only won the pair from sneakers, so um, so yeah, they don't actually work out really well at all, but special edition box, as you can see, is made to look like really old. I guess it's meant to look like it's from 1986. Um, and you do also actually have the bubble window kind of thing um, down here. Like, I guess it's meant to represent the, the kind of side view of the air bubble. Um, and then paper looks like the paper from... 2017 box which is the same this is the same shoe from 2017 as you can see obviously these two two boxes are very different um but yeah the, i've just, just noticed that actually that this paper looks just like the side here um, of the 17 i'm just going to put that to the side as i get them out um, Shoes, not paper. Um, so yeah, there they are. This is the Nike MX1 Big Bubble um, in University Red. So when we, we call it OG Red, it's essentially University Red. Um, here they are in all their glory. Obviously, they are factory laced horribly. Um, I will redo them before I wear them. Um, but yeah, let me just put one down here and just kind of go through the, the shoe itself. So, just to actually pull the laces out a tiny bit. It's really difficult to show what the shape of the shoe would actually look like when they're, you know, when they're that tight, tightly wound. There we go. It's a little bit better. So here you can see the typical OG um, blocking on the MX1s with the uh, mud guard and then the swoosh, and then this middle piece all in the kind of gray felt, and then a bunch of white and the rest of it. So the white mesh on the toe, Nike Air on the back, um, and then the Nike Air on the tongue. Very simple shoe. Um, and you'll see when I compare to these guys in a sec um, where the big changes are. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those pairs where I thought to myself, I can't like, I can't not. Um, I can not, but um, there's some parts of the 2017 that I really didn't like. Um, one bit being the back here and just how puffy they were. I just don't like how like my ankle would be here and then there's this big thing popping out the back. But there are also elements of the 17 that I prefer to these. Um, one of them being um, these laces. I knew this was the case before I opened the box because I've seen all the pictures. The laces are really thin. Pop up an image here. I'm just going to buy five bucks or so a pair of flat whites off of Amazon and replace them. Because the spares that come in the 2017s are also um, like a waxy material. And also, don't, they're thicker, but they're a waxy material. I don't really like that. Um, one real good difference here to, to mention is that it has the sizing on the inside of the label. Um, definitely is kind of slimmed down on the toe box. Um, 
and yeah, let me let me just actually just get into um, into the 2017 pair. One thing that you may notice straight away. I'm just going to take these down. Is the color? So these have yellowed a lot. Um, you saw earlier I had the obsidians on. I actually, I'll ping an image up here. I held the obsidian before I put up my foot next to these and it kind of get, probably gives you a better view of just how yellow these have gone. Um, yeah, I mean, I've taken massively great care of these. It's a six year old shoe. And I mean, other than the yellowing, look at the, look at the shape and look at the, the condition. Although I have worn these in Europe, Asia and North America. So they've seen the world with me. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main difference, let's just get straight into it, is the air bubble. So as you can see here, the 2017 air bubble is what we have come to typically know as the air bubble. And then this guy is much bigger. So it's the, the, main, the main difference really. Um, and I think like outside of that, there are a bunch of other smaller little details. Um, I mean, this, this line that goes through the air bubble is also different. The, the midsole lines don't go all the way down. So it's mainly like a midsole difference. The rest of the shoe for the most part is like small, small tweaks. Um, but yeah, the, the, that big bubble is the, the main difference. Um, I'll shoot a few other images up from maybe from MX1 enthusiasts. I think I've seen a, a bunch of pictures floating around. So I'll get those in as well and you'll be able to see some, some better, like much more close up pictures there. Um, so yeah, why have they done this? So in 1986, um, Nike produced something that looked very much like this, right? Um, and I'm led to believe 400,000-ish pairs got released. Um, and then they realized that this was too big um, and it was crumbling. So you can see here, there are three ports, three holes in the, in the air unit. And then here, yeah, four. There are four visible holes. So there's one extra kind of section to it. Um, and what they were, what they found is, I don't know if it was like shoddy testing in the first place, but what they found is um, any, everyone who bought them, um, they were falling apart. Um, and Nike has a very, very um, good returns policy. I guess they lost a lot of money there. Um, I'm also guessing in the mid eighties that like product testing laws and things like that were probably not as stringent, but that's just, uh, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, but um, yeah, either way, they had to recall hundreds of thousands of pairs. And then this this is what kind of came from that. Um, so they've gone back in the archives, much like they've done with the Lost and Founds, with the um, Reimagined Threes. They, they're just taking stuff from out of the vault, doing it up in an old school way. Um, so as you can see, there is isn't there's no aging on this shoe. I, I don't actually think this would look good at all with aging. They as much as I do love this, like this toe box is honestly, um, it's annoying to me. Like, it just doesn't look as good. This is a this is a shoe that looks better crispy, whereas some look better a bit worn. Um, so yeah, last couple of bits I'll just go through. So they don't they again they don't come with uh, any kind of wooden stuff. I guess a uh, wooden card even. Um, I guess MX actually haven't really done that. Um, but as we know, all the Jordans are, are, are moving to just the paper stuffing. So they do have that. They do not have any spare laces, and they also do not come with a hang tag. Um, this is the waxy one I mentioned. I'll try them in there. I find they're really difficult to actually get a decent knot in. Um, but yeah, they don't really come with anything extra. Just double check the box. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing extra in there. But I guess like the, the big bubble, the history, the fact that they've redone them, a new pair of these, you know, this is six years old, I've worn them a ton, as I say, in three continents, and they are looking very yellow. So I might actually send a message out to Owen Max, MX1's enthusiast Facebook group, join if you love MX1's and you're not on it, it's great, um, to see what I can do about this yellowing um, and see if there's something like a product that I can fairly easily with low risk kind of apply to it. Um, so yeah, that's that's the review. Um, hopefully we'll get a few more reviews out in the next 
a couple of months or so, but I do want, just want to kind of keep the channel to the stuff that I actually want and stuff that I actually kind of want to add to the collection. Um, so yeah, that's it from me. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I enjoyed making it. Over and out.